Well, hello. It's Friday again. Welcome to our Friday online prayer meeting. We love to take some time each week to end our week by focusing on God's Word. Uh, we'll be reading part of Ephesians chapter 2 today, and then we'll also be praying. So it's, it's a combination of looking at God's Word and then creating some prayers from that. Um, prayer is just a way to communicate with God. It's a way to express our dependence on Him. As Christians, we have access to God. He hears us. He listens to us. He answers. And so we're going to take a little bit of time today to pray, turn our hearts and our minds to God, thank Him, confess to Him, ask Him for things. But we're so glad that you're here. There is a chat happening um, on the side or maybe below wherever you're, wherever you're watching from. But say hello so that we know that you're here. There will be some moments where we do pray together. And during those times, feel free to type out a prayer. Uh, that will bless those who, who are watching and, and reading along. Um, that will help me as I'm praying along with you as well. Um, but today, grab your Bibles. We're going to be reading in Ephesians chapter 2, a small section out of Ephesians chapter 2. So I'll let you grab your Bibles. Um, have you ever seen those photos, before and after photos? Have you ever seen maybe a video of um, a house that was you know, in terrible condition, and then a team goes in and renovates it, and they have the before and after photos? Um, as Christians, um, today we're going to read a section where Paul looks at the before and after. So for Christians, we, we believe that we are being transformed by God's Spirit. Uh, that's one of the, the, the great things that happens when we become Christians. God begins to transform us. And it's a little bit like uh, an, an artist who creates a statue out of wood or out of stone. Here's a statue I picked up in a charity shop years ago. Um, an artist will take some sort of knife, some sort of tool, and, and take his material and, and slowly chip away and carve away to create uh, an end result. So there's a before and after. And that's a bit of what God is doing for all of us. Over time, um, he transforms us. He shapes us to be more like Jesus Christ, our Savior, and that's really good news. Some of the changes are obvious. Some of the changes, they take time. We won't see them for, for months, days, years even. But we know that there's a promise that as God changes us, he allows us to glorify him more and more. And so it's easy to forget that that's what God's doing in us. Uh, it's easy to, to forget that as God changes us, he has a purpose for us, a mission. Uh, that mission is, the big picture is to glorify God in all that we do. But we do that by telling people about Jesus. We do that by loving our neighbors and serving the people around us. But it's easy to forget that that's our mission, especially now in this quarantine lockdown. Um, we've had a season where we had to focus on ourselves, to, to be safe, to isolate, to kind of protect ourselves. Um, but let's not stay there. Uh, God has so much more for us, even in this time of lockdown. And we're going to see that today as we read out of Ephesians chapter 2. We're going to see the before of, of what life was like apart from Christ. And we're going to be reminded of the good news of what God has, has done for us, but also the life he has prepared and what we get to live out now. So if you have a Bible, let's go ahead and read in Ephesians chapter 2, verses 1 to 10. So here we go. And you were dead in the trespasses and sins in which you once walked, following the course of this world, this world, following the prince of the power of the air, the spirit that is now at work in the sons of disobedience, among whom we all once lived, in the passions of our flesh, carrying out the desires of the body and the mind, and were by nature children of wrath, like the rest of mankind. But God, being rich in mercy, because of the great love with which he loved us, even when we were dead in our trespasses, made us alive together with Christ. By grace you have been saved, and raised us up with him, and seated us with him in the heavenly places in Christ Jesus, so that in the coming ages he might show the immeasurable riches of his grace in kindness towards us in Christ Jesus. For by grace you have been saved through faith, and this is not your own doing. It is the gift of God, not a result of works, so that no one may boast. For we are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus for good works, which God prepared beforehand that we should walk in them. So that's Ephesians chapter 2. Um, oh, we've got some people joining us. Great. There's, there's Graham. There's James. Hi, Brian. Hi, Gina. Hi, Judy. 
Uh, thanks for joining us today. We're going to be reading and studying briefly out of Ephesians 2 and, and then creating some prayers out of that. So look, at, look again at just those first three verses, 1 to 3. This is the before. We talked about before and after pictures. The before, it, it's not a good picture. Paul says, before you were saved by Jesus, before that, you were dead. You, you were slaves. It's a very terrible image. Um, coronavirus is bad, really is. Cancer's terrible. But the real sickness, the real problem we face in this world is not primarily physical. It's spiritual. And Paul paints this picture of us. Before we knew Jesus, we were dead. We were sick in our souls. That's the natural state of, of humanity. Um, it's a kind of spiritual death. The problem is that people refuse to, first of all, see the evidence of God's goodness. To see the ev- They refuse to see the evidence in creation that God is, is powerful. And people don't want to admit that ultimately we are all dependent on him. And so this is a picture of rebellion. It's a picture of people opening themselves up to evil. Um, there's, a, there's even this description of the enemy, Satan, who takes control of people, enslaves them. And we become slaves to our own passions and lusts, and so we're spiritually dead. And this is a terrible picture. Apart from Christ, apart from God's work in our lives, we can do nothing, nothing at all. We're cut off from the source of life. And so that's what we were like before you were a Christian, before you were a believer. That was your life. And then Paul says that for all of mankind, those who are not connected to Jesus, this is the description that they live in now, and it's not good news. But the good news for us as Christians is this is the before. So let's pray now. We could be thanking God all through this prayer time for what he's done for us. But let's take a moment now and, and confess. Uh, even as Christians, we, we, we know that God has changed us. He's given us a new heart, a new way to live. But we still struggle against sin. And so for many of us, especially in this coronavirus time, our sins, our weaknesses will have come up a lot. And so we have some reasons to confess those to God, to repent and say, God, forgive me. And the good news is he's quick to do that. So now let's, let's pray. Uh, I'll be silent for just a little bit. Uh, this is a time for us to be thinking about our life, to be thinking about the areas where we need God to show up. Um, an area. This is a time for us just to confess and say, God, I'm sorry. So we'll be silent for a little bit, then I'll lead us in some prayers. Um, do say hello in the chat. Do, do be praying along with us. If you want to type out a prayer in the chat, that would be amazing. But let's look at the first part of Ephesians and pray together. God, before you saved us, we were dead in our sins. There was nothing, nothing at all that we could do to save ourselves. Before our sins were forgiven, we walked in darkness. Our deepest desires, all of our behaviors went against all that was good and true according to your word. And so we were slaves to sin. We were slaves to our passion, our lusts, our foolish thoughts. God, we confess that the wages of sin is death. The soul that sins must die. And so, God, forgive us for our many sins. We confess that we have often sinned against you in our thoughts, our words, our actions. We sin in what we've done and and by what we've left undone. God, we have not loved you with our whole heart as you deserve. And we have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. And so we are sorry. Thank you that Christ died for our sins in accordance with the scriptures. He suffered once for our sins, the righteous for the unrighteous, so that he might bring us to you. We are thankful that those of us who are in Jesus, those of us who have trusted in his death and resurrection, we are given freedom from sin. We are no longer slaves. We are free to live a life that glorifies you. We are forgiven. And so, God, we are truly sorry And we humbly repent of any sins that we have done today, this past week, and in our past. We confess those, God. We ask for forgiveness for the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ. God, have mercy on us that we might delight again in your will and walk in your way so that you will receive all the glory. We pray this in the name of our Savior, Jesus. Amen. So that's the before picture. Um, Sin, darkness, death, slaves to our our, our lusts and our passions. That's the before. Uh, But then in this next section, 
Uh, here's the good news. Let's look at that section of verses 4 to 9. Um, the good news is that God, it says, but God, God has acted. He has done something for us. He has acted in history. He, uh, he, he has brought good news. And look at what this good news is. God is rich in mercy. His plan from the beginning has, to, has been to be merciful to his people who don't deserve it. His plan is to, has been to save his people from their sins. And look at the good news. It's a free gift. Many believe that we have to somehow earn God's love or manipulate him so that he will be good to us. That we, we have to become acceptable to him through our actions. Um, as I travel the neighborhoods um, around Croydon, around where our church meet, meets, as we talk with people, Many people will say, I, I just have to be good, then God will accept me. I, I'm holding out that if I do enough good deeds, enough good works, if I'm a good person, then God will accept me. But when we look at that before picture, we realize that that's not true. There's nothing that we can do to earn God's favor or his love. There's nothing we can do to cover over the sin and darkness that exists in us. We can never earn God's love. But here's the good news. God offers us salvation as a free, undeserved gift. Look at um, verses 8 and 9. For by grace you have been saved through faith. It's all by grace. And this is not your own doing. It is the gift of God, not a result of works, so that no one may boast. In fact, Paul has repeated this in this section. Did you see that as we read it? This is not by anything that you've done. It's not by your works. It's not by your good deeds. It's by the work of Christ. And that is such good news because my faith doesn't rest in, in what I've done. It rests in what Jesus has done for me. So how do we receive this free gift? Later on, Paul says in Romans, if you confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. And, and there it is. That's the good news. That's the turn. It's how we get from the before picture to the after. It's the work that Jesus has done on the cross to save us from our sins. And it's all because God is rich in mercy. He's rich in love for people who don't deserve it. So, so let's pray now some, some prayers of, of thanksgiving to God. Um, let's celebrate what God has done. Um, again, I will be silent for just a, you know, a few moments. Um, go before God, um, be thanking him, and then um, I will lead us in prayer. But again, if you want to add some prayers into the chat, please do that. Let's pray together. God, we declare with joy that you are rich in mercy. You are gracious and merciful. You are slow to anger and overflowing in steadfast love. You showed your great love to us by sending Jesus to die in our place. He, he lived the life we couldn't live, life we should have lived, but we just couldn't because of our sin. But then he died the death that we deserved. He took our place. We deserve nothing from you but wrath, punishment, and yet you have chosen, God, to give us eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord. We want to celebrate that. That is such good news. We were once dead in our sins, but now all who are in Jesus are made alive. So thank you that Jesus took our sins on the cross, that we might die to sin and now live to righteousness. We are not saved by any work that we've done. God, may we never believe that lie. We are saved only by the work of Christ. We cannot earn our salvation. So thank you, Jesus, that you did the work for us. Thank you that now salvation, eternal life, this new life, it is a gift that is given to us. God, may we freely embrace that gift and live out of that gift. It's the free gift of eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord. And so we will praise the Lord at all times. We will constantly speak his praises. We will boast only in the Lord. Let all who are helpless take heart. Come, let us tell of the Lord's greatness. Let us exalt his name together. We praise and thank you, God, for what you have done 
for us. It is a gift. And we love you for it. Thank you so much, God. Amen. So we saw the before. Apart from God, we can do nothing. Apart from God, we are stuck in our sins. We are slaves to sin. That's the before. But then that great phrase, but God, God has acted through the life, death, and resurrection of Jesus. We have new life. We are saved from our sins um, now and in eternity. We have a new way to live. Uh, and now I love this, this last verse, verse 10. Paul reminds us of our purpose, our mission. Do you realize you have a purpose? You have a mission. There is something God wants you to do with your life. Ephesians 2.10 for we, those of us who are in Christ, me, you, if we are in Christ, we are his workmanship. We are his masterpieces created in Christ Jesus. Why? For what purpose? For what mission? For good works. And these are the good works which God prepared beforehand so that we should walk in them. He creates each of us in Christ as a masterpiece to join him in the work of his kingdom. It's good work that he has prepared for us. He's gotten it ready for us. He has a plan and a purpose. And now he wants us to walk in it. Uh, I love that phrase. It's not just do it. It's walk in it. Walking means lifestyle. This means all of life. This means all that we do. It's not just um, things that are in the religious realm, things you only do in church. It's all of your life. You are to live a lifestyle. It's a way of life, doing the good works that God has prepared for you. It's everything we do because we owe our entire lives to God. This is how we respond to what God has done for us. In joy, we say, okay, God, what can I do for you? How can I bring glory and honor to your name? So it's, it's definitely, first of all, sharing the good news of Jesus. That's our mission. That is our purpose. That's why we exist. We want others to share in this free gift. So God sends us out to tell people how they can find that gift, how they can receive that gift. That's our mission. It's what we do at Redeemer at our church. We want to share and proclaim and hold up this good news. But then Jesus says, love God and love your neighbor. And so it's also the good works of us um, as God's generosity stirs up in us, as, as compassion and love and justice stirs up in us. We look for opportunities to love our neighbors in the name of Jesus and point them to him. At Redeemer, we say it this way. We will relentlessly put God and then ourselves before others. That's what true love is. It is the secret to happiness. True joy is found when we give our lives away for the sake of Jesus and the gospel. We are spiritual contributors, not consumers. We, we don't exist just to take things in. The church does not exist for us. We are the church together, and we exist for the world. So we have work to do, friends, even now. It's so easy for us to forget in quarantine, in isolation, that God has work for us to do. It might look a little bit different. I wonder what work you could be doing this week. What neighbors could you be praying for? What opportunities do you have to start up a conversation about the good news of the gospel? Um, maybe you could order some gospel booklets, some, some gospel tracts to pass around. Um, maybe you could just, as you walk and do your exercise, your bike riding, those things, you could be praying for the people around you. But you have work to do. Let's not get lazy. Let's not get apathetic. Let's not get bogged down by fear and anxiety or boredom or disappointment, all the things that we might be feeling in this coronavirus time. We have work to do. Friends, you and I, we've got good work to do, so let's do it. So here's our last section of prayer. Let's pray out of that. Let's ask God to help us with that good work. Let's pray for those around us who don't know Jesus. And then let's, again, continue to celebrate what God is doing in our lives because of Jesus. So let's pray. I'll be silent for a moment so we can reflect on the scriptures, and then I'll lead us in our last prayer section. Here we go. God, I, I agree with, with James. Let us not boast in anything else but the work of Jesus. Let us hold up you in all things. And I agree with Judy. Thank you, Lord, that you are going to save. You, you, we can't do anything except by your grace. We need you to save us. And thank you that you have saved us. And now, God, we, we ask 
that you would help us, send us out in your spirit and your strength to do the good work that you've prepared for us to do. You've created us to praise you and to enjoy you in all that we do. Thank you for inviting each of us to join you in that work that you're doing, the work you've prepared. Help us now, God, to follow Jesus more closely as we love you, as we love our neighbors. Help us to be quick to share the good news of salvation with everyone. Help us to be filled with courage and wisdom so that we won't miss an opportunity to show people how they too can be saved. Help us not to miss opportunities where we can talk about the gospel. We want our friends and neighbors, we want the city of Croydon, we want the world to find salvation in Jesus. God, help us to know how to do that. We ask that you would help us see every opportunity that's around us, even in this quarantine time. Free us up now, God, to, to love you more. Help us to love you more than our reputations and our safety. Help us to love your transforming kingdom more than our own personal agendas. God, may your story of reconciliation and redemption be more precious to us than personal peace and comfort. Help us to resist focusing on a life of getting more for ourselves, but God, help us to focus on living lives as servants, ambassadors, messengers for your kingdom. Help us to know and remember our purpose. We have the awesome privilege of bringing you glory in all that we do. Help us to proclaim the good news of Jesus in all things. And so God, we thank you for what you've done. Thank you that you will fulfill all of your purposes in us. We pray for those around us, God, who don't know Jesus, those who are stuck in sin and darkness and addiction, God, those who are stuck in, in the power of Satan, God, would you free them up by your gospel? If there's a way that we can take part in that, God, show us how. Send us out. We thank you for your steadfast love. Oh Lord, your love endures forever. Help us this week. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Well, that brings us to the end. Thanks for joining us, everyone. Thanks for praying along with us together. We're, we're scattered all across the city. Maybe some of you are even watching um, from across the world. I, I heard that maybe some of our friends in the Gambia might be watching with us today, but we're all scattered, and yet we're all one in Christ. And that's such great news. So God hears our prayers. He's with us now. Uh, he will be answering those prayers according to his purposes. So this Friday, this weekend, go out in the power of God's Spirit. Be blessed knowing that Jesus is with you. He's prepared great things for you to be, to be a part of. So be open, be attentive to those good works. Uh, it's great to join, to join together today. Thanks for being here. Thanks for taking some time out of your afternoon. Uh, we'll see you um, on Sunday. You're welcome to join us at Redeemer Croydon Online. The link is um, below this video. Have a great week. We're praying for you. We love you. We miss you. Have a great day. Bye. <laughs>